what's up YouTube? In this problem, we have an infinite sum. The question is, does it converge or diverge? So the first thing you think about when you have a sum like this is the sine function is bounded by one. That means it's trapped between negative one and one. So you can kind of ignore it, or at least we'll be able to control it at some point. And the bottom, we have a two to the n. That should make you think of a geometric series. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare this series to a geometric series. Now keep in mind, you can only use the direct comparison test when you have positive terms in your series. So what we will do is we will show absolute convergence. So we'll take the absolute value of this and we'll show if the series converges. Therefore, if the absolute value converges, it also converges in the regular sense. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's start by taking the absolute value of this and creating an inequality so we can use the direct comparison test. So we have the absolute value of sine of 2n over 1 plus 2 to the n, absolute value. And again, we know, we know the sine function is bounded by 1. That means that the absolute value of the sine function is less than 1. So this is less than or equal to, so we can just replace the sine with a 1. 1 over 1 plus 2 to the n. And you can drop the absolute value on the bottom because 1 plus 2 to the n is always positive, right? So life is good. Um, now, you can drop the 1 on the bottom, right? This is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the n. You might say, well, why can you do that? It's because this fraction is smaller than this fraction. Because 1 plus 2 to the n is a bigger number than 2 to the n, right? It's bigger, right? So the fraction is smaller, right? Think about it. If you have 1 over 100, that's less than or equal to 1 over 2 because 100 is bigger than 2. So when you make the number on the bottom big, the fraction becomes small. Right now we have to explain why the sum of these guys converges and, and we'll explain why this converges, well the sum of those converges, so 1 over 2 to the n, n equals 1, because we start at 1, 2 infinity, this converges by the, this is a geometric series, so I'll just say converges by the geometric series test, right, since r, here r, is 1 half and an absolute value is less than 1. Notice I didn't take the absolute value because it's already positive. By the way, r is 1 half here. If it's not clear, note you can write 1 over 2 to the n as 1 to the n over 2 to the n, and that's 1 over 2 to the n. So r is your common ratio. Remember, if r is less than 1, the series will converge by the geometric series test. If r is 1 or larger, it will diverge in absolute value, right? You can have a negative one half, and it will still it will still converge. Okay, so 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 what did we do? Let's see. We we showed that the absolute value of this is less than or equal to this, and the sum of these terms converges by the geometric series test. Therefore, so thus, this infinite sum, the infinite sum of absolute values of sine of two n over 1 plus 2 to the n, right, right, everything looks okay. Thought I messed up there for a minute. This converges by the direct comparison test. That means that our series absolutely converges, right? Whenever this converges, then we have what's called absolute convergence. So we say that this series converges absolutely. And anytime you have a series that converges absolutely, it also converges. So the answer in this case would be converges. That's it. Thanks for checking out my channel. Until next time.